Yeah, sure, Vorinclex. All these lands can't, can't attack, but I'm not going to get an additional turn. Because we're swinging with so much damage here, it's disgusting. Hello, YouTube, our is fine day, and today we're going to have a look at Jack Beer Nexus of Revels in Historic Brawl. This deck aims to win by going wide on the board, playing Jack Beer Nexus of Revels, and just killing the opponent. So, Jack Beer Nexus of Revels, a 4 mana 5 4 that has three different modes with very similar activations. Um, basically, the first one is if you have three or more creatures, you get uh, your creatures get plus one plus oh and vigilance then six or more it's plus one plus oh and trample and nine or more it's uh plus one plus oh and double strike and all these add up and they also count jetmir himself so basically you need eight other creatures to have all um like the full text on this card active so if you have eight under the creatures um and you attack with those eight creatures you now at least like if they add, all of them are one ones you're attacking with a uh, four power vigilant trample double strikers eight of them and that usually kills the opponent right so the plan here is just play a bunch of token maker servo exhibition it is a white dragon fodder dragon fodder is a white servo exhibition um and um like you can see we just create a bunch of tokens um, we create even more tokens, we draw cards of our tokens, um, we buff our tokens and create more tokens, and uh, we multiply our tokens and then draw based, you know, on our tokens. And that's the whole game plan, and the reason why Jack Mirror is so strong is because all the effects do like basically one out of three things. They draw a card, they create more tokens, or they sometimes interact with the opponent. And there's not much in between, really. Um, and uh, I mean, also buffing the, uh, your tokens is kind of a thing, right? But um, like they remove Jetmir, you play Jetmir again, remove Jetmir, play Jetmir again, remove Jetmir at instant speed, I might say, because usually a sorcery speed is not, is not enough, right? Because you have a board, um, you attack and kill them. Um, yeah, and then like you go to eight mana, you play Jack Mirror again. And you just brute force your way through all of that while you have an actual board and actually attack the opponent. So sometimes you just win without Jack Mirror being on the field, right? So this is the deck. If you enjoy it, please consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel um, is greatly appreciated. And let's see this deck in action. We are ready to play against Teferi Time Reveler. And interesting, interesting. I mean, we have a bunch of land drops. Sure. Let's keep it. <clears throat> Question is, what do we want to play on two? And it's almost always the Sky Knight Vanguard, isn't it? So if it's the Sky Knight, I have all the bold lands here, actually. That's so funny. Yeah. Play you tapped and play Mar uh, Emiria's call untapped next turn. And this is a matchup where we're likely not going to. Um, like just we're, we're not going to overextend. We are taking this very very slow and methodical here so probably not your like typical goldfish game where you try to go for the turn four or five kill um this is really a very very patient game basically and a card that will probably win the game on its own is sky knight vanguard here Question is, if they have removal spell and the fairy bounce a token, I'm in a pretty bad spot, right? But if I play a Curse of Silence here, um, they can counter that. The reason why I don't want that to happen is because if they counter it, I am. Um, like, I, I don't want to give them targets when they don't. Like, when when I don't need to give them a target, I want to overload them in one single turn, so something slips through eventually, right? If I Curse of Silence and they counter, I can Shatterstorm and create three 1-1 one, one squirrels, but that just plays into a board web, and I think a Sky Knight Vanguard is actually potent enough on its own that it threatens a, like, 
um, that it like requires a board wipe. So if they've specifically removed the spell and then play Teferi and bounce a token, then I'm in a pretty bad spot. But other than that, I think I'm just going to not do anything. Not even play the Curse of Silence. So let's see. Yep, that's an opt. If they have a sorts of plowshares for the Skylight Vanguard, then that could be troublesome. Yep. And uh Let's see what they will do. Um, so, the foretold card here is... Okay, they have two foretold cards now, but they didn't have... Like, I'm inclined to uh, say that this is... One of these two cards is a... Either an Alrun's Epiphany or a... Didn't say please. Because they would have played a Behold the Multiverse, basically just to draw a spell earlier, instead of the opt, right? Um, let's swing it first. And same concept applies. You're just going to wait, not even play the Curse of Silence. <clears throat> and my plan is that I get to, I guess, as soon as they board wipe, I can Curse of Silence, name something, um, and, uh, okay, one of them is a Doom Scar, that is absolutely fine. Ooh, Paladin class is a really nice one. Um... Let's see. They didn't. They cycled cast out, so they. This is not a. Like, I would have played the Behold the Multiverse there instead, in the end step, right? So, this could either be an Alrin's Epiphany. Tree. Um. I think it's a. It's a counterspell, actually. I'm going to go for Curse of Silence here. And then. Name didn't say please with it. Didn't say please. It is didn't say the please the one. Actually, wait. Scryfall. Man, uh it's not didn't say please. It's um text <laughs> foretell. What's what's the name of the card? What is the name of the card? Saw it coming! Ah! Yes, it saw it coming. Okay. So now Palin class. I assume they counter that, really. And now we Shatterstorm for X equal 3. Create 3 one ones, and that should be pretty good here. Okay. And now, in the future turns, we're just going to activate Paladin class to um, threaten them. Vanquish the Horde. Yep. Just how I like it. Um, I'm going to play a Trostani Discordant as a standalone threat here. Just create more pressure. <clears throat> And because I really wanted to resolve the Paladin class here, because that is going to be really good in the long term. Um, yep, let's activate Paladin class. And uh, swing in. If they have a... Um, what's the name? Settle the wreckage, that would have been fine there as well. Um, so knowing that I can refuel with the Seasoned Pyromancer, I think I want to play Join the Dance, because I can just play that next turn together with the Seasoned Pyromancer if I... If uh, two, like, wanna... If I ever... Like, um, I have twice the chance to get a land here, right? Because it's Mystery Card, which could be a land. Uh, Tristani, 
Oh my god. Yes, this is so good. Especially that they use their commit to memory earlier. They have very few tools against this. Beautiful. Yeah, sword coming is the foretell says. But didn't say please is uh, three mana and instead of foretell, I mill. Yeah. Okay, and the token actually has power here because of the Paladin class. And it goes through. Amazing. And I draw so, so, so many cards here. Um, I really... Yeah, I'm not going to play anything, really. Um, we'll accept the land, obviously. Ah, perfect. There's the Den of the Bugbear. I'm just not overextending. This is an enough to kill them, right? And that's why we want to be. We just want to have enough. Okay. Pretty unconventional game here. <laughs> I'm usually uh, I only have one screen, but I have this um, like capture locked to MTJ. But um, <laughs> yeah, I was just during the game just trifle double check twice, and I'm glad that I double checked here. So now I want to wait on the Toski. I want to rebuild with the cards that they um uh that they want to counter, like. Right, because they can't counter Toski anyways. I'm going to start on the Paladin class. Okay, um, and then... They played the Fairy, that's not good enough, right? Uh, I could just go for... Wait, that's... With an Adlin, that's almost lethal, right? Yeah, let's Adlin. Animate Den of the Bugbear. And I believe that board is already threatening enough. Yeah. So I've set up lethal just from manland alone next turn. I have a bunch of threats in my hand. Like, they have to answer a cranker, right? Um, Season Pyromancer, they also have to answer, uh, pretty much. Um, so I am going to name... Yeah, there is nothing I could have named... Uh, that they could have done here because everything costs one more so they can only cast zero mana spells during my turn. If I didn't have the Paladin class I would have named Swords to Plowshares and then animated the Den of the Bug Baron swing in. Anyways, GG. We already play against Jetmir Nexus of Rebels in the mirror match. And uh, I go first, that is great. And this is definitely a matchup of speed. Who can kill the other one first? So I don't look for interactive elements like this and I look for good mana and just Mulligan. Um, Curse of Silence is not that insane in the mirror match. I'm inclined to keep this based on how this is shaping up anyways. I go um, Dragon Fodder into Curse. Okay. Dragon Fodder. And then name their commander. Uh, Jet, Mir, Nexus of Rebels, there we go. The cards that I'm looking forward to in this hand are actually the, like, March of Multitudes. Those, that, that's a just great card. If I don't draw land here, I actually do. I need to think, um... I think I just want to drop my Jet Mir here on three and swing in. Um... And in this spot, trading off, like since I'm ahead, trading off tokens one for one is probably beneficial for me. Okay, Jugun defends the temple, sure. Um, overgrown farmland. How much is this? Four. So yeah, we swing with everything and then we create for tokens and instant speed. Now we are trampling. Yep, pretty good. And then that should be lethal next turn if we play a Season Pyromancer. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. If we draw a non-land, that's lethal. Um, I mean, I think it's lethal anyways, right? Yep, and that is the game, GG. We are ready to play against old Rutstein. 
and uh, let's see where we go with this. Oh, mono green. This is a playable mono green hand, though. I not really. Oh wow, um, a lot of green, but no green. Um, also, probably not playable. Chamber Sanctuary is just great if like they have a lot of removal. Um, draws so so many cards. Keep the six. And I think I'm supposed to bin the planes here. Yep. So... Kill the goose on one. Turn to Amara. Turn three, Welcoming Vampire. Attack with Amara. Draw a card of the Welcoming Vampire. And that's a pretty... pretty decent start. Yep. Pass turn. We don't get too much value out of the Gilded Goose here early, but... I mean... Probably eventually, right? Nope, we don't get to draw here. Uh, change of plans, Cranko. Um, that thing get, can get out of control really quickly. And they need to have another removal spell to answer this. They don't. Um, I think I'm just going to play Elspeth here. Um, plus, so Cranko gets toughness. And also power and uh, creatures. And they are not able um yeah they're just conceding to that wow <laughs> because they can't bl like block and kill Cranko and it's probably going to attack twice wow this is insane GG we are ready to play against Quasar and interesting but slow hand um Quasar is a control combo deck. Um, they're trying to uh, like play Quasar and one of two cards that basically win the game instantly if Quasar is on the field. Um, so I need to grind them out, but I also need to be fast enough. Conclave Tribunal is pretty good at like removing their draw engines, like in the form of enchantments or artifacts. I'm... I, the, the only reason why I wouldn't keep this is because I do not have something to do on turn uh, on turn three uh, right now. But I think I'm just going to play Forbidden Friendship here, swinging. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Swinging. And then we can flash and raise the alarm in their end step. Pretty good. Uh, yeah. Not going to play Jack me here. Also, not going to play Anointed Possession. I just don't want to give them a target for the counter spells. This is already threatening enough. They have to board wipe this, and if they board wipe, they are tapping out. And if they are tapping out, then I can resolve my Anointed Possession. I can also just resolve the Jet Mirror, but I think just having the Anointed Possession is probably even better. Because <clears throat> I just have so many cards that make tokens, right? Oh, that's a Rebel Rousing, though. Um, I think I'm fine throwing my Jet Mirror under the bus here, basically. I just... yeah. Um, I just want to get the Counter Spells out of their hand here. I am... Wow, so many alt arts. Oh, this is this is beautiful. Look at this. No parallax styles on Thirst for Knowledge. And no alt art on Quasar. Parallax style instead. Weak. But no, um, I have, haven't seen this World War Denial art basically ever. Because it's a rarely played card. And I think you have to craft this art style. Crab of God. Yep, there we go. Now I am going to resolve my Rabble Rousing. And that turns everything into a, a big threat. I think I want to get the shot out of the skulls. <clears throat> S per sentinel, sure, sure. We get to play. I know the procession probably gets countered, but that's fine. We are paying for the S per sentinel here. <laughs> Don't miss Vito. Yeah. And then we play Lano Elves. And Lano Elves doesn't look like much right now. 
But remember, whenever I attack, I get that many tokens. Um. Yep, that's fine. Ooh. Okay. My plan here, call life tribunal on the Quasar. And I'm not going to pay for this. If they counter, they don't. Um going to try to resolve the Guardian project. Okay. Um they don't have enchantment counters, like non-creature counters or whatever, it seems like. But I'm afraid that I can just die. Um the thing is their cards um that they use to combo me off with require triple black and they're only on currently one black source. They're thinking what they bounce and it's close. Yeah. So now they have to counter up for that. Swing with Asper Sentinel. Uh, that is... Uh, counter it. Do it. I'm paying for this. Wow. Okay. Swinging at you. And this bot is already threatening enough because I attack and then I create two tokens, four tokens, and so on and so forth, right? So I think they're just going to board wipe this anyways. Don't worry. Um, they this. also have board wipes at instant speed available, thanks to Teferi Time Reveler. Um, if they play Quasar here, then they're likely not going to board wipe, obviously. <clears throat> mm-hmm, that is fine. I believe they have an actual counter spell here yep swing in they block two of them sure. and I am going with servo exhibition yep and do I shadow storm it no I don't think so goes up to three very interesting. <clears throat> kind of don't want to. Ah, I mean, I need to draw a creature eventually, right? And like, if I just get to resolve one creature, then Guardian Project draws a card, gets a ton of fuel, and either they like combo kill me here, which is a very real thing, I might add, go. right? Um. Like, I can't do anything about that anyways, or they're just going to board wipe. But if they board wipe, then they are also killing their own Quasar with that, and that's just great for me, right? Um, I do want to kill the Teferi. I really do. And I get to play a showdown for Skulls here, if the Rabble Rousing trigger goes through. Yup. Oh, that's so beautiful. I assume they counter this. They don't. Wow. Wow, that's insane. Okay. Um. There is a lightning bolt. Hmm. Oh, wow. Um. I let that go through. And then I can lightning bolt the quasar, right? Um, sure. And if they, like, just actually let that go through... Wait. Uh, we just play that again, I guess? Oh, they bounce their own Quasar. No, they don't. Uh, yeah, it's only a spell, right? Okay. So now we get to play Battle Screech and enter. I mean, if we lose, we lose. Can't do anything about it. But they still don't have triple black here because they played the path. They had to play the pathway on white here early, I believe. Compulse of research. Um. Yep. Okay. Rafine. They have one more counterspell here that 
could be troublesome, obviously. Um, I think I have to block this. Oh, not. They're looking at the heroic reinforcements. Yeah, it's scary. It's definitely scary. I wish I had the mana for Jack Me plus heroic. Um, that would be really brutal. No. I'm going to start out on the heroic reinforcements here because that's the card they know about. Um, doesn't matter where we put this on, honestly. Wow, resolves. Uh, Elspeth. Give my creatures plus. Yourself, Just do I a bunch more damage. In and just I swing in, do. honestly. Just swing in. <clears throat> Doomblade? Sure. Is that still lethal? I don't think this is lethal now. I could have had lethal if I played the, like, something before round, like Elspeth and Minus, I think. Yeah, this is not lethal. Wow. Okay, if you got it, you got it, opponent. Let's see. Do they have it? They still need... No, they have triple black, so they need the Lich's Mastery. They do have the Mind Stone to crack. Um, to draw a card here. Lich's Mastery is probably not even going to do it, because like, we're going to do so much damage to them. Let's just Mastery for reference. This is a six mana enchantment that says, whenever you gain life, you draw a card. And Quasa says, whenever you draw a card, uh, you basically gain a life, so, and then drain them. So they're doing a ton of damage to us with that. Um, yeah. Basically draw their deck. Um, it also says can't lose the game. So it forces them to draw their deck, but they can't lose. Um, Okay, they're trying to drain us out here, um, but I believe there that I don't see a way how they can kill us here. So Rafine is going to deal three damage. <clears throat> Probably. Two in there and then one from the draw trigger from Rafine. Thirst. Yep, that's also not going to do it. Well, they're actually just almost draining us out the normal way, but uh, yeah, that is a good game. GG opponent. We are ready to play against Nethroi. And, um, oh yes, this is, I like this a lot. Uh, Nethroi tries to... Uh, fill the graveyard and then you just mass reanimate everything basically so I have to watch out for that they're a creature based deck so they're probably light on board wipes uh oh well okay carry zev I assume is the play here yeah I think it's just carry zev just more damage um although it's worse against spot removal obviously Okay, they have their colors. There is set spot removal, but on the other hand, um, I can crank us command and then hold up a fateful absence, which is pretty good, honestly, because then we get a token back. Um, yep. They're self milling with the cemetery tampering, sure. And then starting next turn, I can just drop Jetmir, and uh, that's pretty, pretty strong. Yep. Destroy the Skyclave. Give me a token. And, um... Yep. Oh, there is a Legion War Boss. Um, if I drop a Release the Dogs now, is that a lethal next turn? Yes, it actually is. Um... If I have a Warbass, that is not lethal, I believe. Can just... I, I'm just going to drop the Jetmir. Um, because they know that's coming, basically. Um, this is worse against Swords to Cloudshare specifically. Swords to Cloudshare specifically was in their hand. 
Um, but uh, that is fine. They're cracking the clue. Okay. So now I think I'm just about to. Uh, interesting. Release the dogs or Legion War Boss. I think it's release the dogs here. Um. My reasoning here is that, like, on a complete empty board after a ball, or I'd, I'd rather have a Legion War Boss than release the dog, actually. Um. So, yeah. Also, this is just lethal if I uh, top deck an untapped land here. Because I get to play Jack Mirror again, double strike in. Up oh, there is the untapped land, and that is just lethal. Beautiful. Okay. Jack Mirror comes down. Yeah, sure, Warren clicks. All these lands can't, can't untap, but I'm not going to get an additional turn. Because we're swinging with so much damage here, it's disgusting. Yeah, all of these have double strike, vigilance, and trample. GG. We are done with the game, so I hope you enjoyed them as much as I did. And Jetbeer Next of Revels, definitely a force to be reckoned with. And as far as I know, currently the number one most popular commander in the public play queue. And you can see, uh, this is, um, yeah, this is not entirely without reason. Um, this deck has a bunch of really, really good cards available, uh, like, I would say we could build easily 120 card deck um, with this uh, commander and we wouldn't really lose out on too much card quality so uh, that's definitely a definitely big plus so if you have a reasonably sized collection but you're missing a couple of cards here don't worry because there are a bunch of replacements for a lot of these well, not replacements, but similar cards um, or like just good cards for the deck. Um, speaking of collection and wanting to play the deck, if you want to play this deck on a budget, what can you cut? What do you need? And I'm playing a bunch of rares. Um, obviously, again, as always, uh, craft your lands, especially in a three color deck that wants to play on curve. So get all these mana fixing lands you don't care about something like a Bosage because this, like you can just replace this with a forest right um this can be replaced with a mountain this can be replaced with a mountain but you do care about all the color fixing lands so those are really really crucial to have in your deck um so now that that is out of the way what cards are you actually looking to craft and you have to understand what are effects that you have like a lot of redundancy already of and then what are effects that are either very hard to come by or just so so good that it's basically the only option um so something like a tosky bearer of secrets it, there is nothing like Toski. Yes, you can play another draw engine, but can you have an uncounterable, indestructible draw engine? I think not. So something like a Toski is great. Um, you have a bunch of ways to make tokens. As you notice, like basically all these cards ramp you or just make tokens in the common and uncommon section. So it's just natural that you can especially cut like these token makers on two. And then there are a bunch of other token makers on three, like you shouldn't worry too much about this, right? Sylvan Awakening, super cuttable, right? Season Pirates, obviously a really good card in the deck and it does draw you cards as well. But um, if you only have a few cards and you want to like um, draw a bunch of uh, cards uh, with a few wild cards you do craft, I would recommend something along the lines of Shaper Sanctuary. That's just a great, great uh, card against spot removal. Uh, Toski is great. Um, Guardian Project can uh, keep the cards flowing. We're not running too many creatures, actually. So Guardian Project is something that is actually pretty cuttable. Um, but it's also just a card I just recommend crafting in general. You need none of these, like, double face lands. Just replace them with basics, right? Um, I have a few Anthem effects. Um, Rebel Rousing is also taking the spot of an Anthem effect, really, but it's obviously much better if it goes off. Angel of Invention, Trastani, but you just play any Anthem effects instead of these five drops. Um, Removal-wise, I think it's 
either play the most efficient removal in the whole format or just play none at all because you are a quite linear aggro strategy well it's not super linear but like you're you're trying to kill the opponent um not interact too much with them so swords of plowshares lightning bolt curse of silence fateful absence right those kinds of cards if you don't have them uh, have them don't sweat it um just play more tokens and uh, i believe uh, this is it for the deck tech um or like the the budget recommendations oh one more card i can just highly recommend uh, to have in this deck is paladin class because it is great against counter magic um gives you it, it's it's probably one of the better anthem effects for sure um anyways hope you enjoyed today's deck if you did consider subscribing to the channel liking the video and i will see you in the next one